Unafraid Show, Reister or Wrong. It's your boy, George Reister in the building. First of all, thank you guys for joining me today. Um, you have a lot of other things to do with your time, but I appreciate you spending it here with me. Swipe up, like the feed, share the feed, tell a friend about the Unafraid Show, and as always, visit unafraidshow.com. All type of great articles up. And I will never, <laughs> well, not, not never, but pretty much never, uh, finish up without answering any of your questions. Send them in here via um, Periscope, Twitter, YouTube, wherever you're watching, or the podcast. Send them in to I'm mad, I M M A D, at unafraidshow.com. We got a bunch of great things up for you guys today, but there's a hot button topic that we must address. We cannot ignore the elephant in the room. The, the giant panda bear in the room, whatever the hell you want to call it. So there have been all type of articles and everything written about black coaches. New York Times article, uh, black coaches being fired. So I got a question for you. Do you believe it is racism or the NFL is just a meritocracy and they just hire the best people? Then there's other people that feel like there's 70% of the league is black. So why isn't there more representation of black head coaches with with the peak being this last year with eight and well 2017 with eight and then uh, i think 2011 with eight as well i got the answer for you i got the answer for you about why um so it's not just strictly racism what it well actually it started as r racism because um first of all i want to address the fact that there are so many people that uh, they got this thing all wrong. They're talking about they they believe that people are upset that black coaches were fired, that um, that the Marvin Lewis was fired in St. Louis. I'm sorry, in Cincinnati, that Vance Joseph was fired in Denver. No, the firing is not a problem because as a general rule, the firings are not a problem. It's the hirings that have been a problem in the NFL. It's not the firings because the NFL is a not for long league. So it's the hirings. Number one, it's the retread scratch and dent band coaches. Like you hear the uh, Jeff Fishers, the, the, the Del Rios, the uh, other failed NFL coaches who continuously names continuously brought up, but other coaches are not. So, um, here is the, there are two points that I want to make up before I give you what the actual reason is and the solution. So the first thing is, is that there should not under any circumstances be a quota on how many black coaches or minority coaches or women should be in the NFL because it should be a meritocracy should be. And the second point is, is that equality often feels like oppression from those people who are the beneficiaries. So those two things are both true. And so this whole thing has been distorted about the firings, but it's not about the firings. It's about the hirings that has been a problem. So the Rooney rule went into effect in 2003. That meant that the teams had to interview at least one minority candidate. And what teams started doing is they stopped they stopped really giving people real interviews and just doing these fake interviews. So is this racism or is this a meritocracy? Because I keep hearing that the NFL is a meritocracy, but the NFL is not a meritocracy. The NFL is a place where like you can't have a true meritocracy where things are merit based, where the best man wins when just when you think about the players money becomes an issue. You have players who are more talented cut because of the salary cap, all of these things. Okay. So what, so that does away with the meritocracy issue, but here is the thing. This has to do with the same problem that black quarterbacks faced because remember there was so long because yes, we see a ton of black quarterbacks. Now black quarterbacks were not seen as, as intelligent. They weren't seen as uh, capable or oh, as white quarterbacks were, regardless of whether you want to call it actual racism, whether it's conscious, subconscious, this is what people believed. And this is what some people actually said. 
So there weren't black quarterbacks until the uh, Doug Williams, the Randall Cunninghams. Obviously, you had the Shaq Harris's back in the day and some other people, but it wasn't a consistent thing. And this is the same thing that's following uh, the the, uh, coaches because the majority of coaches, people who get head coaching uh, jobs in the NFL, most of them come from an offensive background. An offensive background. A quarterback's coach or a... Um, or an offensive coordinator. That's where the majority of them are coming from at this point in time. So, so if you don't have, if you didn't have black players who were allowed to be quarterbacks, how can they then be quarterback coaches? If they weren't allowed to be quarterbacks for so long, mind you, these things are changing and they take a while to catch up. So there were so long that black players weren't allowed and weren't chosen to be quarterbacks. It wasn't because of talent. It was because they were like, oh, oh, I don't want to have my best athlete at quarterback. I want to have you running around, catching balls, doing something else. Yeah, right. So now that you're starting to see more black quarterbacks, a guy that I played with, got drafted with, Byron Leftwich. He was now a quarterback coach in Arizona. Now you're going to see more of those guys becoming quarterback coaches because they were successful NFL quarterbacks, and those are the people who can teach quarterbacking. And then you'll see more of them become coordinators, and you'll see more of them become head coaches. This is a catch-up issue. Is it a racism issue? Yeah, it started with the quarterbacks. And then, yes, the same was true about how they felt about black head coaches. And Anthony Lynn, who is the coach of the Chargers, had a coach tell him to move to the defensive side of the ball because he had everything to be a head coach, but to move to the defensive side of the ball because that would give him a better opportunity to be a head coach instead of being an offensive coach because black coaches aren't looked at as strategic thinkers and the same way that white coaches are. This is a fact. So so the question is, how do you... So now that we've identified the problem, what's next? How do we solve the problem? We'll get to that as well. So, but but the other question is, um, should NFL coaches and GMs be an equal representation of the percentage of the league? I say no. I say it could be higher or it could be lower. Regardless, because it should be a meritocracy, the best person for the job should actually get the job, not based upon race, color, creed, sexuality, gender, any of that. So how do you achieve that? Just told you how you achieve it. It it is going to come as long as black quarterbacks keep on happening. And then also a word that I hate, absolutely hate out in this world that we talk about right now, which is awareness. But I do think that this topic being brought up is very crucial and very, very important. It is like, it is like you can't even quantify how important it is for people to to talk about this and to be aware of what's going on. So should there be an accurate representation of the players, which are about 70%? I say no. So what should the actual percentage be? There's a couple things that you have to factor into the situation, into the equation. Black people make up about 13% of the population. That would equate to about four head NFL head coaches. Then there is the fact that 70% of the league is black. So you would assume that with so many black assistant coaches that they would eventually turn into head coaches, right? Mm -mm. Gotta be quarterbacks coaches and gotta be offensive coaches, especially in offensive coordinators in the way that the world the football world is trending today. And then so many people threw out the straw man fallacy. Oh, well, well, women aren't coaches must be racism and sexism. Wait, what? What? The truth is, is that women aren't aspiring to be NFL head coaches at the same rate that men are just period. That doesn't make a woman not capable because you have somebody like Bill Belichick was not an NFL player not even a college football player turned out to be a great head football coach. 
So can a woman do it? Absolutely. Is there going to be some barriers? Yeah. Same way with a women, uh, women reporters, women who uh, are analysts for games. Men, men don't really like that. So it's one of those best man for the job. But, but when you look at somebody funny who doesn't really look like you think they should be qualified for a position, makes you a little bit uncomfortable. So we do have to recognize and admit that. Uh, someone just said, um, it can't be a meritocracy if people of color have never had a level playing field, particularly in the, in the, uh, leadership positions. Well, the NFL makes so many millionaires. Uh, there's no way it can be racist. It's, it's all black players. Hmm. Here's the thing. There's a difference between allowing people to entertain you and allowing people a position of power because you, we don't mind certain people entertaining us who we don't agree with, who we don't necessarily like who, you know, but there's a difference in that. There's a difference. It I'll give you an example. There's a difference between being a coworker with somebody. And there's a difference between that person dating your daughter, marrying your daughter. That's the difference that that's the, I have five black friends person versus Five black friends wanting to marry your your daughter. That's the test. So the question is, um, well, so I say, if you don't believe that black people are striving to be head coaches and GMs at the same rate as white men, that's actually foolish. It's actually foolish. And uh, I was going back and forth with Clay Travis earlier today, and he said, well, how about the... Um, how about the white cornerbacks? So you don't think that white people are being, uh, are cornerbacks at the same rate? Oh, it must be racism. No, no, there's a difference between God-given ability and skill than it is mental aptitude and intellectual ability. All men are created equal. So there are smart black people, there's dumb black people. There are smart white people, smart dumb black people. Smart Asian people, um, uh, dumb Asian people. Same thing with Mexican, uh, people from Honduras, China, everywhere else. Everybody, they got people that fall within the spectrum. So there's absolutely enough people who want to be head coaches that can be and do it well. So that's the thing. So, so my question to you guys is this. Do you guys believe that the amount of, that the amount of coaches I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, should be representative of the players of the amount of players in the NFL. Hmm. I wonder what, what you guys think. Uh, someone asked, he said, should white and black players be equal? No, because it's supposed to be a meritocracy and in players, it pretty much is a, a meritocracy except for when it comes to the money aspect, when salary caps become involved, because a lot of people, because there are people who get cut that are the best players on their team because the team wants to save money. So that's the meritocracy aspect of it. It should be a meritocracy and that would make people happy. But the problem is it's not the firings. That is a problem. It's the hiring process because, uh, NFL coaches are a good old boys network. Good old boys. They hire their friends. They hire the people that they coached with. That's why you see so many retread names. So I see the Jeff Fishers, the Jack Del Rios, um, uh, other coaches who didn't do well and they get from the scratch and dent band and they get second and third chances because it comes from the good old boys network. So now that has to be expanded and exposed because there shouldn't, you shouldn't have to hire anybody because that's completely wrong. That's actually the, the opposite of what we want to be doing. So the question is, how do you fix it? So how do you fix it? How do you fix this issue with the black coaches and all that? That's why I said the quarterbacks are the, uh, that that's where they go. That the quarterbacks is the place that you have to point to. Because as more black quarterbacks do well and play well, you will have more black quarterbacks become uh, quarterback coaches which will then become offensive coordinators, which are in demand hiring. So I have some stats for you guys. 
I have some stats for you guys. Out of all the, um, in terms of black coaches over the last decade, on the defensive side of the ball, you are three times more likely to be a uh, defensive coordinator and get a head coaching job than you are as being an offensive coach and getting a head coaching job. That's because the quarterback position is considered the thinking man's position. And you didn't have black people playing it for so long. Now it's catch up time. So is this just inherently racist? No. On its surface right this second? No. But did it start out with racial beginnings? Absolutely. 100%. Like there's no denying that. But I do think that we have to look at data in a different way because people, it's easy to point to black coaches being fired and saying that that's racist, but it's not because bad head coaches, coaches who don't win, they get fired in the NFL at the same rate, white coaches, black coaches, all of that. It's the retreads and the hiring process. So how do you stop um, these mock interviews? The NFL actually had to up its rule on the Rooney rule. They had to magnify and intensify the Rooney rule because uh, for, for instance, the Raiders who had done a great job under Al Davis hiring minority coaches and just trying to get the best man for the job. They hired Art Shell, the uh, uh, Reggie McKenzie is GM Raiders had done a great job, but when they went to go get Mike Mayock, as their GM, when they went to go get uh, John Gruden as their head coach, they did straw they did straw interviews with with black coaches, interview people within the organization, and so the whole point is uh, there, there there's so many people that will say, well, this is the NFL. They care about money. They care about winning. So they're gonna find the best talent. Yes, sorta, sorta. This is sorta true. Yes, they're going to try to hire the best person that they think will bring wins. However, if the minority coaches are not being interviewed, then it's impossible to get those jobs if they're not getting real interviews. And a lot of that trends to what I said, the quarterbacks, the offensive side of the ball and the thinking man's job. Uh, Someone said, um, (laughs) they asked a question about coaching. How do you fix arrogant players like Antonio Brown who caused the Steelers a shot this year? What should Tomlin do? Um, the, the Steelers have bigger problems than just um, Antonio Brown. Yes, he is a problem. Yes, he is a headache. But you got Ben Roethlisberger throwing his teammates under the uh, bus. Tomlin letting stuff slide too much. But he's a winning coach. He goes to the playoffs almost every year. So how do you fire him? And the Steelers don't do that sort of, sort of thing. If I'm him, I trade his ass away. I mean, there's just no other solution for him, uh, for me in this situation. Now I want to get to some of the comments that I got sent in specifically about this topic. Um, uh, Someone said 70% of the players may be black, but only 19% of coaches uh, in the NFL have NFL playing experience. Not sure what this proves aside from the obvious fact that players are rarely coaches. Okay. Not 19%. uh, So that's a little misleading because not all, not 19% of all NFL coaches, period, like assistant coaches and all that stuff are, um, have playing experiences significantly higher for position coaches. The, um, however, the other part is, is that coaches, I'm sorry, players do translate into coaches. And you have so many more quarterback coaches uh, out here just in LA. You have everybody from Steve Clarkson. You have George Whitfield, who's a quarterback coach. You have um, you, you, you have the Diaz brother, the Diaz guy out, out here. You have so many minorities who are now quarterback coaches. And that's going to translate into something else. I know that that's going to be an unpopular opinion because everybody wants to just point strictly and exactly to, to, to racism. But I don't see it like that at this point in time in 2018. I see it's completely different. So how do you fix it, though? Because there is no you either have to go all in and say, you know what? 
these coaches, we have to have a certain percentage of black coaches. Well, that's completely wrong. So that's completely wrong. And you can't leave the system how it is. So what do you have to do? You have to continue to have the Rooney rule until you don't need the Rooney rule. Uh, do I think it takes NFL experience to be an NFL, to be a good NFL coach? The answer is no. You do not have to have an experience to have NFL experience. You have to have coaching experience, significant coaching experience to be a good head coach, but you don't have to be a uh, NFL player. I mean, look, you have a bunch of people. You, you, you got Sean McVay, you've got um, uh, Belichick. You, you got a bunch of guys who didn't play who are good coaches. That doesn't change it. However, players can be good coaches as well. Uh, I want to move on to the next topic. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, send them in to I'm mad at unafraidshow.com and I will absolutely get to them. Um, the NFL. Oh, wait, hold on. Um, There's a couple more questions that came in. One from Ralph Amson. Todd Haley never played football at any level, even high school. Exactly. So, so why are we pointing to. Um. NFL coaches as this, um, as that, that they should be, that they have to have a coaching pedigree to come from, to, to make it or anything like that. Um, oh yeah. But, but the one and done like Steve Wilkes in Arizona, that was kind of garbage. Uh, I, that, that makes no sense. He had no chance to, to succeed. He was given a, uh, he was given Sam Bradford and a rookie quarterback with no offensive line and no defense. Yeah, okay. That that gives you no chance to succeed. But this is the world. This is the way the NFL works. Um, I want to talk about the college football playoffs as well. Because as I said, Georgia had no business in the college football playoff and Texas proved it. And the second thing is, if LSU had had... Their, I'm sorry, LSU played UCF in the Fiesta Bowl. Had LS, had UCF had their quarterback, Mackenzie Milton, they would have won by 10 points. Uh, I'll, I got to go back for just a second, guys, because somebody just sent in a comment about Marvin Lewis. They said he coached in the NFL for 16 years without winning a playoff game. That's the person that people love to point to. Because he's the outlier. He's not just the outlier amongst black head coaches. Marvin Lewis is the outlier amongst all all NFL coaches. You don't get 16 years and don't win playoff, win one playoff game. Nobody gets that opportunity. So this is not just an outlier of black coaches. Marvin Lewis is an outlier of all coaches. Except for maybe like him and Jeff Fisher are around the same, except for at least Jeff Fisher did go to a Super Bowl once. Um, also, I'm going to get back to the college football playoff. Georgia had no business in the college football playoff. We all know it. Texas proved it. And I was trying to figure out before the game even started because I told everybody who was going to win. I was trying to figure out what excuse they were going to use. What excuse the Georgia fans and the SEC fans were going to use when Texas beat them in the Sugar Bowl? Was it the team wasn't interested? Bowl games don't matter. They were missing players or was it going to be something else? I saw all of the above. And now the SEC is six and five in the um, in bowl games. They got one more to go with Alabama. If Alabama loses, they're six and six. So does that look like to me? I'm just curious. Does that look like a dominant conference? Especially when you got Mississippi State. They lost. Um, yes. Yes, Kentucky won, but Kentucky should have been playing like Washington State anyway instead of Penn State. But that's just, but that's a whole, that's a whole nother Pac-12 problem. This game was won and lost for Georgia when, when, B, when Bebo, the mascot, attacked Ugga. When he attacked the Georgia mascot, it was, I saw it before the game even started. I was like, Georgia's got no shot. The mascot's even trying to kick their ass. Um... Yeah, so, and I think that from what we saw this year, it is mandatory that the committee expands to eight teams. Mandatory. 
because eight is the correct number. There are people who fear that if you expand it, that it's a never ending cycle. But the NCAA only expands so far. They're 64, now they're 68. They're not going to 120, 124 where everybody, 130, everybody makes it. No. So the question is, why is eight the right number? The system is clear. Five power, five conference champions. Because everybody was saying, oh, then conference championships won't matter. If you, if the five power, five champions get in, conference play will matter that much more. You will have more intensity. You will have more fans there. It will be a huge draw. And then you have the highest ranked non-power five champ, um, non-power five team guaranteed a spot. This year would have been UCF. Last year would have been UCF. Previous years, it would have been like Boise state, Utah, um, Boise state again, you know, team teams like that. Um, you also have, oh, and then you would have two at large bids. And this year, those probably would have gone to Georgia and maybe LSU or somebody or Washington state or somewhere, somebody along those lines. And that's how you fill out your playoff because the playoff. And then also those meaningless bowl games that players sit out of, you will guarantee that's two more bowl games that are already being played that you will have teams that you will have kids not sitting out of. They will be playing in those bowl games. Because they want to win a championship, they want to shine, and they will not sit out on their teammates. They will not sit out on themselves if they're playing for a championship. So that increases the bowls just that much more, which means more TV revenue not to give to the players. That means more money for the coaches, more money for the schools. Everybody gets rich except the players, just the way they like it. That's why eight teams is the correct but how about the, the detractors that say, well, these uh, the semifinals weren't competitive? I would argue that the semifinals haven't been competitive because you all you don't always get the four best teams in. You get the teams that have kind of earned it in. But let's look at uh, 2015. Ohio State gets in, leaves Baylor and TCU out. Really? Could TCU and Baylor have won a national championship that year with Art Browse? Maybe. Maybe. You have this year, the way Ohio State, yes, they lost to Purdue in a bad game, in an emotional game. You, you had the kid, uh, Trent, who just died there. Like, it was an emotional game. Ohio State had no chance. The emotion was way too much. Like, it, they were up against a buzzsaw. But the Ohio State team that you saw against Michigan – and against Washington can beat anybody. They can beat Alabama. They can beat Clemson. They can beat Oklahoma. And they can beat Notre Dame. Um, you also have... Oh, yeah. So, so the four best teams don't always get in. Or the four teams that are playing the best. Think about two years ago. USC started out the season slow. They put Sam Darnold in and they win like 10 or 11 games straight, including the Rose Bowl. There was no team hotter than USC then. But the beginning of their season, starting out 0-2 or 0-3, basically uh, wiped out any chance they had to be in the playoff, despite playing the best at that time. So that's what a an 18 playoff would give you. It would include the teams that are playing the best at the time, not just uh, the the teams that have gone unscathed throughout the regular season. So I don't even understand the people who are talking about retraction, going back down to two teams. How on earth are you supposed to, I mean, because truth be told, people would have still been trying to throw at Georgia in the top two teams over Clemson. There, there would have been talk of that. So you eliminate the bias you el- and make it a system to where the committee only has to rank the playoffs and choose two teams that are the wa- the essential wild cards. They get the wild card berths. I mean, the, the, the money is there. The interest is there. 
There's no way that this could fail. No way. Um, yeah. So you guys, um, if you guys missed anything about the black head coaches, you guys can start the podcast over or download the podcast. You guys, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy. You guys make sure that you, uh, download the podcast, share it with a friend, tell a friend about the unafraid show and visit unafraidshow.com. Let me see if I missed any questions on the way out. Uh, Patrick field, uh, take the conference champions. Yep. Um, already. And then also he said the FCS and all other divisions have a 16 team playoff. I don't hate the 16 team playoff, but the kids are already playing up to 15 games, 15 games, which is almost an entire NFL season. And if you add that, then you do have to subtract from the regular season, which I'm not totally against either. I'm not totally against that either. Um, see if we have any more questions. What I said, guys, I appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Make sure you uh, visit Unafraid Show. Tell a friend about the Unafraid Show. Thanks. Peace out. Catch you guys later.